Today is Easter Sunday, and Easter is very meaningful for us because I believe even it has more significance than Christmas in itself. Because while Christmas is the very celebratory birth of Jesus Christ, but if it were not for Easter, we would not have our religion of Christ Christianity because Jesus would not have risen from the dead. But because he has risen, we are here thousands of years, two millennium later, celebrating the fact and worshiping Jesus and God in spirit and in truth. Yes, Jesus indeed rose from the dead. And he's not a mythical character, as in Zeus or Hermes or Hera. He's the real deal. He's the real resurrected and living Lord who is recorded in history itself. And most of all, because he died and he is alive again, we can believe that he is truly the Son of God. If you trust him, you can believe that your sins are forgiven. Because Jesus resurrected, and so will we after we die. Thus, we can all believe in this wonderful resurrection. And the early church members, they greeted each other like this. So we're going to try. We're going to say, the Lord is risen, and in response, you can say, we will also be risen. So I will say, the Lord is risen. You can say, we will also be risen. So can we try that, please? The Lord is risen. Lord is risen. Amen. We celebrate the Lord's resurrection every, every year about this time late March or early April, depending on the Christian calendar. And as Christians, you must stand firm on the foundation of belief that the resurrection event is indeed true. But if Jesus didn't actually resurrect from the dead, if he did not, then people all over the world would have would have celebrated Easter for two millennium, and there would be no greater fraud than that. Brothers and sisters, if the resurrection of Jesus were not true, there would be, no, there would be a big problem, not only for you and me, not only for our generation, but for all humanity beyond time and space who believed in Jesus. It would be the longest lasting, lasting scam ever, the biggest scam. Everyone who believes and celebrates Easter would be called the most foolish. The Apostle Paul is referring to this. Paul speaks to some of the Corinthians who claim that there is no resurrection. Reading from 1 Corinthians 15, 16, through 20. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Amen. If Christ was not resurrected, our life and salvation, all of our lives and efforts of faith, praise team members gathering every Saturday, giving praise, us coming every Sunday, giving worship, Wednesday, Wednesday nights, Friday evenings, 
early morning prayer, all of that would be meaningless. In a word, those who believe in Jesus would be the truly the most pitiful and the most miserable. People would say that our lives are in vain. However, the Bible clearly states and reveals that Jesus was resurrected in history. If you look at verse 1 of today's text, it says that when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Like this, the three women went to the tomb of Jesus. And these women went to the tomb of Jesus not convinced that Jesus would rise again. It shows their mentality that they were going to see a dead body of Jesus when they got to the tomb. They were just going to anoint Jesus' body with spices, which was customary at that time. And on the way, they probably wondered, how in the world are we going to move that large rock that's blocking the door of the tomb? They were worried. Upon reaching the tomb, they discovered a surprising fact. The large rock that was blocking the tomb door was rolled away, and the tomb was empty. And upon entering the tomb, there was a young, they found a young man and an angel dressed in white and sitting. And this is what the angel says to the woman in verses 6 to 7. The angel told the woman that Jesus was resurrected. It says, don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, of Naz Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they lay him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. At first, the women were scared and they ran away. They fled from the tomb because they were afraid, simply afraid and confused. Soon, the woman told what had happened to them and what they had heard and seen from the angel. They informed the disciples. As we celebrate Easter here today, we too are convinced of the resurrection of the Lord. We must have faith that we will be resurrected just like the Lord. And also, a part of us must be also resurrected today. So throughout today's sermon, let us think about a few things. Number one, could we all say this together? Our faith must be resurrected. Amen. Some people have lived in their faith. We've been going to church for a long time. But unfortunately, there are people whose faith is dying. Thus, our faith must be resurrected. How much are we going to struggle to make money? We must work, yes, hard and honestly so that there is no financial difficulty for us. And we also have to work hard for success and for our family members and for our children, for those who have children. Yes, these things are important for us, but the most important thing is to strive for the resurrection of faith. Hebrews 11.6 says, And without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and He rewards those who 
earnestly seek Him. Without faith, no matter how splendid success you have, it will only be a pitiful life. Many years ago, people who came to church would worship with more fervency, more earnest, earnesty, and with more passion than we see today. Maybe the COVID virus has something to do with the level of our passion for worship and attendance, perhaps. But when God sees our faith restored, and he, when he sees us worship in spirit and in truth again, he will be moved. So why has Christianity declined and the members' passion for faith weakened? It's because we have lost our spiritual and genuine worship. Now, many people think that they can live well without God. Worship is an act that exalts God to the highest. Now, people no longer exalt God to the highest. Looking at the biblical history, we see instances of when a person does not exalt God. God lowers that person. On the other hand, no matter how difficult the environment, when a person worships God in spirit and in truth, God dramatically exalts that person. The lyrics of hymn number three were the words of the apostles that were to be martyred in the early church. Glory to the Father, and to the, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. Amen. The person being brought to death, death sentence. People who were about to be executed, they were able to say, Glory to the Holy Trinity. How in the world? Is this possible? On the way to dying, how could someone possibly praise God? Do you want to know what the answer to this, this is? That is the power of the resurrection faith. We must also have this resurrection faith. The risen Lord is always with us in this world. He will be with us until the end. He is with you, not only this lifetime, but forever. And he meets all of our needs at the right time. The birds that fly in the air are also taken care and raised by God. And so are we. Isn't everything so precious? The Lord said. Thinking that the resurrected Lord is with us, who we worship today, we must be the people of faith whose faith is resurrected. Number two, can we all say this together? We must restore the first love of the Lord. Amen. In verses 6 and 7, it says that when the woman came to the tomb, the angel who looked like a young man dressed in white said, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So there is a question that arises. Why 
that the Lord asked to meet his disciples in Galilee. The region of Galilee was despised and rejected. The Lord could have met them at the capital city of Jerusalem, and he could have met them also in other regions that was better than Galilee. But why did the Lord ask to meet in the remote region of Galilee, the countryside? Galilee was where Jesus first met his disciples, and the gospel movement began there. The Lord meets in Galilee there to restore his first love to the disciples. And it would have meant to start things over. The disciples once promised to share their lives and go all the way to death with Jesus. But when Jesus was taken away, all the disciples were busy running away and hiding. And until the Lord suffered and died on the cross, they were still in hiding and in fear and trembling. One of the disciples even betrayed and denied Jesus, saying he did not know the Lord when he was asked. They were discouraged and went back to their old jobs. But the Lord was resurrected and came to meet such disciples, helping them in their work, eating together, and with many words of encouragement, Jesus covered their faults. Therefore, whenever we think of the Lord's resurrection, we should hear the voice of the Lord saying, Restore your first love and start over. We should be able to overcome our failures and mistakes and start over. In particular, Mark emphasizes this message. This is because Mark had a painful experience of failure himself. On his first missionary journey, Mark followed Paul and Barnabas. And he was a failure in missions work, who gave up because of the hardships, and he returned home, as recorded in Acts 13. But God gave him a second chance to repent, and then he became a diligent worker who worked hard for the work of the Lord. Mark was Peter's fine interpreter and became Peter's disciple, and he helped Peter, in his ministry, as recorded in 1 Peter. He later became the author who wrote this very own gospel of Mark. Brothers and sisters, even those of us who are suffering from failure, we must rise up again. Sometimes, even in the face of difficulties, We must stand up without giving up or being frustrated. You shouldn't say it's too late. Neither should you blame yourself nor the environment. Even from now on, if we restore the first love of the Lord and start again with the risen Lord, God will surely open up a way for you and for me. Number three, shall we all say this together? We must live as witnesses of the Lord of the resurrection. Amen. What the angel said to these women was to go to Jesus' disciples and preach the Lord's resurrection. How could they just keep this wonderful news of Jesus' resurrection to themselves and be silent? No, they could not. Those women were preaching the Lord's resurrection. Brothers and sisters in Christ, like these women, preach the resurrection of Jesus. 
We ourselves must live a life of evangelism. What does the Lord want of us? Is it for us to live lives as witnesses of it is for us to live lives as witnesses of the resurrection. This is one of the most important goals of our life. We are the witnesses of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Evangelism is the greatest goal and the greatest priority in our lives. This is the reason why God does not take us away to heaven right away. It's God's will for us to preach the good news, the gospel of the resurrection. We must use all God-given measures, talents, and opportunities to preach the gospel. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we celebrate Easter Sunday today, our faith must be resurrected. Let us restore our first love for the Lord and start again. And lastly, but not least, let us live as witnesses of the resurrection. That is Jesus' life, salvation, and hope. And we must live as witnesses of the resurrection. May this triumphant life become a true reality for each and every one of us that is here today. Let us pray.